Hello, gentles and ladymen. I'm Ulan Gaming. I am joined once again on this Civgrid video with my brother, uh, Bison Master slash General Spades, who is uh, one Chase of, MD on YouTube. Uh, Chase MD on YouTube, absolutely. He, who is one of uh, the who's who's one of the main contributors to the Civilization Grid and its production. How are you going? How are you doing today, Chase? Well, I'm doing. Right. Uh, actually, just, just getting my nose buried in all these stats, man. I've, I've, I've neglected talking to like all my friends and everything. I'm just like literally just buried in the stats. Just screw all you guys. I'm, I'm doing this now. So that's where my life has been for the past three weeks. Okay. And today we are looking at the civilization grid once again. Um, now there's been quite a few updates as well as quite a few, quite a bit more data in this compared to last time, frankly. Uh, and there's also been a lot of, uh, concerns, points, and questions being made about the civilization grid and its validity that I would like to address, uh, with, with Chase here and get his opinion on that as well. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, why don't you tell me about what's new, starting with, with these. Uh, starting with, you're talking about what? Oh, what sorry, you, can you not see my mouse? I, I was looking at the... Uh, no, tool. no, okay. I can't, but I'm, oh. I got the grid I got the grid pulled up here, so... Okay, yeah, so... Uh, on, my, on my own computer. So, the I, I was referring to the 1250 plus and 1400 plus grids. Oh, yeah, so, I, I mean, I'm not sure that... Um, maybe these were here prior. They were not, in the, we have the 1100 in, plus. In the last video. No. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, essentially what we've done, and these were, these were present prior, they were just hidden, okay. um, in the, in the last video, because there wasn't really enough data, and there still isn't enough data, Yeah. R realistically, in 1400 plus, like, if you look, you can see that we're still missing, uh, a, a single Lakota versus Howd game <laughs> yeah. in 14. There's not one that has occurred in 1400 plus in the past, uh, since January 28th. Uh, so we can't really take the data from 1400 plus and do anything with it, despite there being 4,800 games. Okay. So, uh, uh -huh. a, a little restart, I suppose. Um, this is the civilization grid, uh, through this, we can track a civilization's, uh, track. Uh, we can uh, track each civilization's one v one competitive track record. Uh, it only filters in games that go into this grid that are four plus minutes long, at least eleven hundred plus elo or twelve hundred or twelve fifty or fourteen hundred on the other civilization grids, and only if the players are within one hundred elo of each other. And then it puts that data into this this grid here, which then calculates the win percentage for each civilization uh matchup. And, and for for reference, that within a hundred elo range is like so. If you play a ranked game and you get, um, like the if it's a perfectly if you and your opponent are have the perfect elo, the same exact elo, you'll either gain or lose sixteen. Uh, so then what we've we we did is we figured out well what's like a range like between twelve and twenty is like a solid range of generally equal elo and we we were able to find out that um about 100 elo difference gets you between 12 and 20 elo gained or lost so okay. that's where that that's where that value came from okay so that that's where the value came from because yeah. uh I, that, that actually addresses something that i was i was doing is somebody said like you know there's uh, there's quite a, a huge skill gap in in 100 elo and there really isn't i don't think yeah it, I mean, it depends. It can be, but it for can. the most part, yeah. like there's a any big difference. 1200, like, there's the twelve hundred a... can beat a thirteen hundred. Uh, a thirteen hundred can beat a fourteen hundred. Yeah. Like it's not out of the question. There is a big difference between like sixteen hundred and seventeen hundred, though. I will say that, but for the most part, you know, maybe. Uh, 
So next, we uh, if you scroll down here, we have uh, matchup quality. So each of these percentiles, uh, based on the percentile, is given a color. Uh, if you have a low win percent, then you have red. And if you have a particularly high one, you have green. If it's only kind of high, it's blue, and, and so on and so forth. Um, well, those color values are taken into account for the matchup quality here. So you can see Aztec has... You can see how many of uh, its matchups are green, how much are yellow and how much are red, and how it, it being bad matchups and good matchups. Uh, and so you can take a look at this and see, well, you know, you could play Portugal, but they have like the largest number of bad matchups and not a single good matchup right now, just because of where they are in the game, at least in 1100 plus 1v1 matches. Uh, and so that, that's something you can do with that. You can take a look at Sweden, which has no bad matchups in 1100 plus. Uh, which I think is interesting, because isn't Sweden one of the most fluctuating ones when you go up in, in ELO? Um, well, if we go up to 1250, and, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but like the, the, the Civ scores are... are well, I guess not. Um, they, I mean, they dropped to 85 at 1100, and then again, you can't... There's not enough data. Mm, yeah. Only 500 games for Sweden at 1400 plus, but uh, they're at 81, so... So here you can see um, the pick rate for each civilization, so you can get an idea of which civilization is most played at the moment. Uh, currently, it's Ottoman followed by the British, uh, followed by China, I think. Yes. Yeah. All the, Ottoman, and Britain, China are the most played civilizations at the moment. Poor Haudenosaunee down at 1.6%. <laughs> and and the inter and another interesting thing about like pick rate, which you can more or less take... Uh, from all three <laughs> charts <laughs> is the pick rate the pick rate is relatively the same across across all elo yeah. ranges uh, i i find this kind of funny that the expected pick rate is 4.5 percent and then spain is exactly 4.5 percent you know it's the well, exact yeah, that's... average sim because it's spain <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a hundred a hundred divided by 22 is yeah, 4.54 yeah. so like in a perfect world Every sieve is picked 4.5% of the time. That'll never happen. That, that'll never happen. But, you know. but it, it is interesting. Uh, so tell me about this one right here. So you can see uh, the total games played for every civilization and the total wins and losses with uh, making their overall win percent, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that's that's essentially it. There's there's not much, not really anything deep to that. I find it interesting. I, mean, I think ideally the, the, the highest win percents. Yeah. Ideally, I think the devs want across as many ELO bands as possible, all civs to have an average win rate of 50%. Yeah. Um, and and they're, they're doing like a pretty decent job, like 53, 51, 47. Like the only real outlier yeah, outliers nothing, are like there's nothing Portugal below and or above 60. And the only Portugal and Sweden are like Portugal. the two outliers. Yeah. yeah. And, and India, I guess. Um, but yeah, everything else is... It's actually yeah. very well balanced, a lot more than I thought it would be. Ah, that's impressive. Uh, and then down here is um, the each of these games divide, uh, for each civilization divided into matchups with every other civilization. So you can see, uh, you can go China and Germany, you can see China versus Germany, they've won 95 of their games and lost 92. Uh, the highest one here is obviously British versus Ottoman at 102 games won for the British compared to 103 games lost. So very even between British and, and Ottoman here, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and this is just literally the raw data. All of this is translated directly into the sub grid at the top. So you can see what is also just the, click on one. The important thing versus... about this though is that you can get an idea of exactly how big the sample size is. You know, fifty, you know, ninety percent win rate might be really impressive to look at the data, but then you see it's only ten games, and you're like, oh, so they just lost one. You know, like Italy versus Howd versus Italy, for instance, that has a ninety-one percent win rate, and you go Howd versus Italy. Howd's obviously yeah, the least effective yeah. in the game. And it's ten to one. Like, okay, mm -hmm. and it means something, but you can't. 
you can't make an, a judgment on that yet because there's not that much data. And overall, that is the thing is, even with um, 13,973 games currently in in the one in the 1100 plus, there is still not enough data to make super big conclusions about a lot of civilizations. There's enough to make some conclusions for sure, um, but not all the conclusions in the worlds. You know. No, and and this is. Uh... Uh, only what saturday the the 28th so this yes, is one two this isn't even three weeks of data yeah this isn't even three weeks of data now it, correct me if i'm wrong but new um n- n- new data is input here automatically every 12 hours correct um it's not done automatically i have to we have to input it manually oh, but it's okay. ga- it's it's gathered, it's gathered automatically. automatically but you guys put it in manually like what every day or yeah. something like that every 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 12 to 24 hours yeah okay got it this is when this updates that's that's good to know um so and then this down here what what is this oh um oh, mirror magic. Well, i guess we can i can i guess we can talk about it oh god what did i do uh go back uh, we can talk about it now, I guess. That we so there's been, and well, I guess since we're here, there's been concern about the Civ score, and we had a tier list uh, attached to it, which was, uh, I'll be honest, the tier list was was pretty kind of arbitrary <laughs> in terms of of how to place Civs in right. like S, A, B, C, D, F tier. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it was like relative, right? So you know, any sieve that scored in the top X percent was S. Uh, in the next, you know, it was so let's say ninety five. The top ninety five percent is S. Is this a, a calculation of how the sieve score is is gathered? Uh, so this is so let, let's, uh, the let's put new, in some, some context of sieve score. The new so, version. So civilization score is a point value uh, awarded to each civilization. Um, right here, you can see sort of score based on win rate, matchup quality, and consistency of performance. What is consistency consistency of performance? Do you know? Uh, I do. It's a it's a metric that I kind of developed that essentially attempts to calculate uh, or detract or add points based on how well you do across all phases of the game. So. Uh, if you look at win win loss rates by minute, if you go over to that chart mm-hmm. or that page, yes, and this is only for eleven hundred. The the graphs are only for eleven hundred plus, but it's calculated individually. Um, if you are significantly above or below the average win rate in a specific given time block, so for instance, Aztec wins twenty percent of its games before the 10 minute mark yes. or like oh, or yeah over 20 percent of its games before the 10 minute mark which is not typical over, if you scroll through the charts of its games between 8 and 12 minutes yeah yeah which is very like different compared to everything else so so <laughs> right yeah so so what it does is it it says if you are either over or underperforming in a certain time block compared to every other sieve, then you lose consistency points. Then you're not consistent, so you you can't either win or lose. So consistency refers to the uh, the the civilization being strong in all points in the game, as opposed to just a significant block of the game. Compared to average, yes. That is okay. So that's what consistency means compared to average. So it takes the mean across all of them. Yeah. Uh, and then win rate is obviously taking this into account, and then uh, matchup quality. I'm assuming is just taking it is creating a value based off of how good this chart is. Yeah, and okay. so so back to the original point, which when you scroll all the way down and you see this weird grid, um, it's been discussed that including matchup quality as hard and fast, you know, multiplying X values by how many good or favorable or neutral uh, created a, a pretty large disparity. And you can see that in, in the sorted score, Sweden's at 95 and Portugal's at 57. Yes. Um, uh, which okay. is which is crazy, like because you don't think because that Portugal seventy five is supposed to be the average balanced civilization. Yeah, but like Portugal, Portugal 
isn't an insurmountable it's not insurmountable for Portugal to beat Sweden, but if you look at fifty seven to ninety five, you might assume fairly assume that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. So so down here is kind of a new metric that we're in the process of developing that um, normalizes the Civ scores a little bit. So it brings the average or it brings the range closer together. So the bottom in this one is 63 and the top you'll see Sweden is 84. So they've lost 11 points. And essentially all we've done is we've gotten rid of the hard and fast checks of, is this a good matchup? If it's a good matchup, you multiply it by this value. It, Okay, so this is just taking the, and, so this is just taking the the win percents into account and not the matchup quality grid. Yeah, so it it and takes win percent and consistency, right? Yeah, it it takes win percent uh, for every matchup and then weights it based on it. It applies a, a weight value based on how many matchups there are. So Ethiopia, like Brit versus Ethiopia. Or we can go Howd, I suppose. Brit versus Howd, right? Okay. There's not a lot of Brit versus Howd games, but yeah. there are a lot of Brit versus Ottoman games. So even though in a hypothetical scenario, Brit wins 10 games to zero. Let's say they have a 100% win rate versus Howd. Okay. 10 games to zero versus 50% win rate versus Ottoman. Because, but there's 500 games. Got because it. there's so many more Ottoman games. It, it, it weights it higher. Yes. Interesting. Okay. That's that's pretty cool then. So then those are all added up and calculated, and it's a big mathy thing that I don't need to go into, <laughs> but uh, it's it's better. It okay. is better. That's that's cool. Um, and we've actually had quite a few devs join the Sunbros Discord ever since we posted that original video, which I'm assuming is to take a look at the data we have, which I think is pretty cool. And I'm, I'm curious to see how this will change as updates go on. But here we can see the civilization scores put next to each other <laughs> in a grid, so you can kind of go down the line uh, in, in order and see which one is highest and lowest, just like this, but, you know, horizontal instead of vertical. <laughs> Graphically. <laughs> And and again, the the scores at the top are are the old calculation, and I think yes, maybe with a little bit more uh, work to the new scores, those will be added pretty pretty soon. Okay, so the let's let's address a couple concerns and and questions that I had received and and noted it down. Okay. Uh, one is that uh, th this was the most common one is people claiming that 1100 elo is too low uh in order to really get a an, an idea of the game's balance mm -hmm. and this so, is something uh, yeah let, let's get your let's get your opinion on this first so when when we first started this when we were doing it all manually we're like oh uh, a thousand elo and up because a thousand we thought was average and we were just trying to collect as much data as possible. But you know, once everything got automated, we're like, well, what's what's this actual threshold? And we we found that the average ELO of the entire Age of Empires player base is like ten seventy two. Um, and through us playing and 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 you know just being involved in the game, we we've kind of came up with that eleven hundred threshold as. These players know what they're doing, and they understand build counters orders. and build orders and what, you know, if you see this unit or this sieve, like they understand that um, Dutch is going to more than likely sit in base and then get to age three and make skirms and reuters. Uh, and they understand what they may need to do to counter that. Now, obviously, they're not the best at doing that. But they have a base understanding of the game that allows them to um, a solid foundation. Yeah, exactly, and that's and again, that's a somewhat arbitrary number. But at eleven hundred, you know, eleven hundred plus, you're you're gathering like the top forty five ish percent of all players. Yeah. So the, 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 this takes out you know all of the the new players who just got on because the the base starting elo is 1000 i think before we start to lose or gain anything correct 
and uh but it also means that you need to consistently you know win some games and in order to develop past the point where to to where this will count and then even then you'll only be paired with people who are a similar skill and overall yeah it, like i said it, it only takes into account like a little more than a, 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 like a, a little bit chunk more than like a third of the game's competitive player base the people who choose mm-hmm. to come play online competitive multiplayer which is not relatively the total right civilization which, which is not you know the, the total one third of the actual player base it's just the ones that play competitive um and so I, I I thought that 1100 was kind of the perfect metric. Now some people make the arguments, and this is another note that came up that we should only be looking at data from the top 1100, uh, from the top 18, like 1800 plus to 1900 plus Elo. And I there, there's a couple issues. With okay, that. I'm gonna stop you right here. Okay, we have an 1800 plus grid, and I just unhit it. Yeah, this is this is perfect for for context here. There's a lot of issues with the 1800 plus grid, as you can see. Uh, mo- largely put, there aren't very many people in 1800 plus. You're putting the uh, the the total game balance and civilization balance in the hands of like the top 50 people, you know, top 100 people maybe. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of people don't. Uh, you're not going to get every single civilization played here because uh, I did a little bit of math. Do you know how many different civilization matchups exist in in one v one in this game, Jace? Not including mirrors, two hundred and thirty one. Yeah, there's two hundred and fifty three, including mirrors, two hundred and thirty one without. And um, you had mentioned that when we were uh, when we had um thirteen hundred games roughly in the 1100 we had 500 in uh in ju- in 1800 plus and that's 1800 players fighting 1800 players and that's less th- that that's just over two games per matchup if they played every civilization evenly which they of course do not and then of course there's so few of them that we have crazy statistics like italy having a zero percent win rate against dutch when how many games between italy and like dutch are two there? Let, let's find out here um Italy is here. Um, Dutch. You would have to go to Dutch. Yeah, we would have to go to Dutch then. Okay, Dutch. Italy. There's one game. One game in 1800 plus of Dutch versus Italy. You cannot make any kind of accurate assumptions based off this. And you know. Even oh, if you... Italy doesn't have a zero score anymore. The last time I looked at this, Italy literally had a zero score. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, because they literally had not won any game. Sweden has more than 100. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. But um, y- you have this kind of issue where there's nowhere near enough data to make any kind of accurate assumptions based off this. And, and it would take it would take years to get that. It would so. take years to get this, as you were saying. And there's also the point of why would you want to balance the game um, based around the top 100 players when what's more important is the average player's experience. And yes, the game should be balanced at the top level and the bottom level, but that's not going to happen perfectly. So I feel like the game should be at its best when it's balanced around the upper middle range where it's still largely, uh, it, where the, the top is still largely you know balanced, but the majority of players can experience the game at its best quality you know and so that's that's kind of my thought process in that i think 1100 plus is is great and 1250 plus is probably even better but there are all, probably a lot less games is there a is there a number somewhere that says how many games I, I forget yeah underneath the uh, underneath the total win rate so Here it at, is. yeah at 1250 yeah. we have less than 10,000 games and yeah that's that's pretty significant so so for a couple more numbers that i have 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 written down um, you know, I myself think I'm a, a pretty decent player. You know, I, I have uh, I, I create quite a few strategies that are you know entirely my own and are pretty successful. I don't even meet the 1400 ELO range, uh, and in 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 fact, I have 1348 ELO at the time of this video, and I am ranked 652, I believe. And that is an incredibly small number if you want to if you look at 1400 plus. 
um, that would be, I, I wrote this down, uh, 1,400 plus at the time of this includes 548 players. You don't want only 548 players to determine the win rate, to, to determine this chart that includes win rate for a majority of the player base. Well, then you also have to consider that of those 548 pl like players that are on the leaderboard, probably 100 of those at least are Smurfs, so it's just the same player. Yeah, that, that's multiple actually, times. That's actually a good point. I didn't even think of that. Um, the eleven hundred plus includes just over sixteen hundred players. I think it's six one thousand six hundred and fifteen, and that is a pretty good number of players to get a sample size from. Yeah, uh, I I think which it, which as you said is about forty percent ish, uh, give or take plus and minus some of the competitive player base who actually knows what they're doing and has a firm understanding of the game's foundations. And so you know, like trying to get a chart of eighteen hundred plus is just unrealistic, and in, in in every degree. And not only would it take years, but it would take years with a single patch in order to get relevant data, because the meta shifts every time there's a patch. And that's something we are planning on doing, is, is have per-patch data as well as the all-time thing. So oh, whenever there's a patch released, we will we'll find a way to include data on per-patch basis so we can see if there's any change, as well as constantly updating the all-time grid, too, because that does that is important. Mm -hmm. uh, I got another comments i found it on i think a forum somewhere of somebody saying that you know not every game should be calculated towards the data and we need more filters um he was saying something like you know the game might go longer than four minutes but then one player makes a stupid mistake that's not related to the civilization he's playing and that costs him the game and then that would lower the 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 win rate for the civilization he's playing arbitrarily and therefore that game shouldn't be counted. But that's not how statistics work. Um, we, yes, look, that is we, we, possible. We can't, we can't calculate for disconnects. Yeah. We can't calculate for rage quits. We can't, like, but the, that, that's the, the just going to be part of the data. When the, you calculate, we, we can't spectate every single game. There's just that... The way statistics the way work, is. though, is that, yes, that can absolutely happen, and yes, that would lower that civilization's win rate, but every single civilization and every single every single player playing every single different civilization has the same percentile chance of that happening to them. And therefore, yes, it can affect the win rate in small it, when when you have smaller sample sizes, such as you know fourteen hundred here, which has only less than five thousand games, or the eighteen hundred one, which has like five hundred. Um, but when you have a larger sample size and you get more games, then that becomes statistically less valuable, and you get a larger. Uh, it, it, and you get a larger amount of games that are going to be uh, pure actual, of, games. Uh, actual amounts of these games and that, that outweigh it. So the more games and the more sample sizes we have, the larger sample size we have, the less that will matter. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, and yeah, that, I mean, you said it, it's, it's going to end up being statistically insignificant. The number of disconnects, rage quits, uh, you know, things like that are, are are going to be, the more data we collect, it will be statistically insignificant. And this was uh, another, in, this was a far more interesting comment that I, uh, that, that I uh, thought about for a little bit, but um, somebody was saying that, you know, a, an average win percent, you know, doesn't take into account thing, things that could be important, like whether or not it's a water map and where uh, Portugal probably has a much lower win percent on land maps than it has on water maps, which is true, you know, to a degree. But um, what, what, I, what, I, what I thought about is this is 1v1 ranked, and there is a ranked map pool, meaning that, every, meaning that there is a specific pool of maps that this can play from where they all have a specific even chance and the ranked map pool can indeed have an effect on the 1v1 tier list but you know it is supposed to be random chance and what map you get and so 
you just have to take this data with the pool in mind. And if the map pool changes to include more water maps, you might, you know, see Portugal rise a little bit in the ranks. And that's just something you have to keep in mind where this is a ranked grid ladder, not a random, not a all games of all time thing where you can select the map, you know? So do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Go to all data work in progress and scroll all the way down. Oh, there is this... you go. Whoa, this is really cool. So, yeah, let's so take we're working. New we're working on on finding like like and none of this is really statistically uh, significant. And this is because only, there's this a, there's is only a, the ranked maps, right? This is yeah. These are only the ranked map pool, but there's not enough data in a lot of these to determine um, if if any assumptions being made here are New actually England valid. Is not a ranked map? Apparently not. Huh. All right, let's, um, let's, let's Pampa. Pampa's here. We go. This is a ranked map, right? Or Pampa's? No, it's not. Is it? But like, so there's so if you scroll all the way down, you can see that we've separated them by. Uh, map type according to the game, so land, hybrid, or water. Um, this is something I did not know existed. This is you, this is so cool! Holy shit, Chase! And, and there's not enough data here to make any valid assumptions okay. at all. Okay. Um, for instance, like is India this, is this all has the 1100 a, games again. Yeah, uh, yeah, they are. Like India's got a plus zero percent change uh, on livestock maps. You see plus 15% for Ethiopia on hybrid maps, which, yeah, you know, Portugal. in a sample size of 50 is not really statistically significant, so that could change wildly. So Portugal There's... has 41% um, win rate on land and 51 on water. It's, it's a work in progress to see if there's actually any significance behind certain civs on certain maps okay. or certain map types. Um, and that is a long-term project, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, will it, obviously be updated as as the ranked map pool changes, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, and I do but, stand by like what what I was saying earlier that this is based off of the ranked map pool, so it, it is fair to make assumptions on the win percent based off of whether uh, not knowing whether or not it's water or lands, because there is the same percentile chance every single match. Uh, in ranks that it will be water or land. Mm -hmm. And that, that that's one of the stable parts of the game. And when the ranks pool updates and changes with updates, that's that's kind of why I go over the rank, the, the, the map updates. So I actually like, really care about map pools. I know a lot of people don't, but um, I, I care a lot about map pools. And they, it is true that the map pool can affect, you know, this, this graph here. Uh, but it's it's not fair to say that you can't make a win rate based off of it because it is the ranked map pool where every single game taken here is from the same map pool with the same chance to get each map. Correct. Uh, and I I think we never actually did, like explicitly talked too much about this, but yeah, this is this is new from the last video. We created a graph that shows every win and loss uh, by minutes. Um, for each civilization, so you can you can see earlier that we were talking about Aztec gets more than a third of their games won uh, between the eight and twelve minute mark. Um, any anything here to add, or is that is that about it? <laughs> no, that's I mean, and this, so this is this is not win rate in the classic sense. It's percentage of a civ's wins that occur mm -hmm. in a specific time block. Uh, what's this? Score tracker. That's the Civ scores that um, we, we... And again, because the Civ score calculation is changing, this is kind of out of date now. Okay, so but we'll, we'll it, it's, this. It's just over time, trends over time is what it's going to end up looking like. Wow, what? Is that, is that China that lost like all this? Or oh, no, it's Lakota. That just lost all this huge amount of and, and that that so we deleted a bunch of data that was inconclusive ah. whether or not that was fourteen hundred plus that because that was from the manual he collected data and we didn't know if it was fourteen hundred plus or not so we deleted a bunch of pretty much all the manually collected data from 
1400 plus and that's what caused Lakota to drop so and here's information this is the current tournament right yeah yeah this 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 is information that tracks the current sunrose tournament because you know we gotta have a little bit of sunrose specific stuff in here you know so uh you can feel free to check this out if you are curious to see how civilizations match up in um in like uh the in reference to the actual tournament which will be kind of cool and interesting uh, anyway, I don't think there's anything else uh, to mention here. I think we covered just about everything to, to do with this, haven't we? Uh, pretty close. Okay, so, uh, yeah, as as always, you know, we, we still don't have the craziest sample size. We have almost 1,400 games uh, right now. But well, we actually have, like, almost 16,000, I think. Oh, is, but is only, this an outdated only... grid slightly? Uh, no, it's, it's up to date, but we have... We have... 15,856 total games, but only 13K-ish of them are within 100 ELO, so... Got, oh, gotcha, gotcha, right, filters. Uh, but yes, you know, as as always, you know, we, we update this pretty often, and it's only going to get more accurate uh, the more time goes on. But you know, it's been quite a while since that first video. It's been 13 days, and the number of games has increased drastically by, like, 10,000. Uh, I think last time we recorded this video, there were some matchups that still didn't have data on them. There were two matchups, I think, that still didn't have data on them. That's a uh, distinct possibility. And now now there definitely is. So you you can make more of an assumption on this than the previous video. Um, and I honestly might make a Civ Grid like, video um, uh, uh, related to updates. So like a week after an update happens, a month after an update happens, and then right before the next update, I'll go over the 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 civilization, the, the 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 current stuffs here, so that we can see a difference as uh as the new update comes out. I think that would be super interesting. Um, thank you guys for joining us for this video. Have a great day and goodbye.